Church is the Christ Coastal Truth International Ministries. May the Lord God Almighty answer our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless you, we honor your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for a time like this. Thank you for the grace you have granted us to be alive. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for provisions. Thank you for protection. Thank you for safety. 
Thank you, Lord, for security. We appreciate you for our dear country, Nigeria, because you are the only person that holds it together. We thank you because you are doing as you please therein. And you, your pleasure does not give us havoc. Daddy, we appreciate you for every one of us as individuals, as families, and as a nation. Thank you for planet Earth and all the works of your hands. Let your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, we really say thank you for all you have done. This morning we come to you, Father, to confess our sins, whatever sins we may have committed, either knowingly or unknowingly. Father, please forgive us in Jesus' name. Today, Lord, justify us yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we invite you to this service this morning. Come and be with us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, teach us what you want us to understand today. And give us a heart of understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, please be with us now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the living Jesus. Can somebody please open to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and start reading will stop at the comfortable place. Amen. 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 Genesis 1 and start reading from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without, without form and a void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. And let it separate the water from the water. And God made the firmament and separated the water which were under the firmament from the water which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. And God said, Let the water under the heaven be gathered together into one place. And let it be. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The title of our message this morning is A New Beginning. A New Beginning. Praise the Lord. We give glory to God for that passage that was read to us. It is because of our recording time, we could not read everything. The whole of Genesis 1. It's about a new beginning. Praise the Lord. Amen. The history of how the world came to be was revealed to us in the Word of God by God Almighty Himself. He inspired some people in the past to put down this uh, information for us to know, so that whenever any question is being asked about many things like how did the world come about, how, I mean, how did the light come about, how did the firmament come about, how were the, how did the heavens, heavenly places come about, the various planets, including planet Earth. What is the origin of water? What is the origin of the moon, the star, and all the various things? And how did the trees or the vegetation come about? Then we are able to answer. Amen. But what precedes the whole of this thing or these questions is the fact that we have to start from somewhere. Amen. And that very beginning is God Almighty Himself. He is God Almighty Himself. 
Thank God again that he explains to us what we need to know about how everything originated because he, he was before the very beginning of the earth. He is now and forever will he be even till eternity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And there are so many new beginnings in our lives. Amen. The first one, your birthdays. There is a specific date we were born. And people mark such days. Call it birthday, remembrance or birthday party or birthday get together. All you are saying is that you remember your very beginning. The day you came into this world. Then we just celebrated uh, Christmas a few days past. Annually, that one is celebrated all over the world. What are we marking? The day that our Lord Jesus Christ was born in this world. Like I said, many people have been asking as to the actual date. It doesn't matter. The truth was that Christ was born on a particular day. Whether it's October, whether it's December, it's not the issue. What, what we are marking is the beginning of a new era. You know that the coming of Jesus Christ meant salvation, the coming of salvation to human souls. Amen. Amen. Then, we have just concluded one year, another full year, when you have both the all the seasons, you have the sun, the dry season, you have the rainy season, you have the uh, Abatan, and so on and so forth. That is, and we are beginning, whenever they mention January, it means that there is a new beginning. Amen. Amen. A new beginning. January, when you get to December, all you will say is that the year has ended. As the Lord God Almighty lives, all of us we shall witness the end of 2022 and beyond. In the mighty name of Jesus. None of us will drop off even as the year moves forward. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only that, you anything can be a new beginning. Amen. For instance, parents put their children in school. And they will start from maybe the kindergarten, and then they, they keep on moving and moving and moving till they get to primary school, from there to tertiary institution. All those ones are a new beginning because as you advance in all these stages, you are improving. Everything about you is improving. So, for a good 25 years or so, you may still be in the process of, you know, gaining your uh, degrees and so on and so forth. As many of you that are in that race today, the Lord will see you through and you will come out with flying colors in the mighty name of Jesus. So, there is always a new beginning. Let's take our farmers, for instance. Farmers are resting now in Nigeria. Because this is a dry season. Whatever they are doing now is a skeletal work or maintenance work. In Nigeria, for instance, in our own part of Nigeria, we discover that farmers have started their own new beginning since about October, I mean from September, October up to November, when it was still raining. What did they do? They start hitting their hips and they start sowing their uh, seeds, yam seeds. They start sowing them. Those yams are resting now. And those yams signify a new beginning because the yam seeds or the seeds that were cut from those yams, they were taken from the previous year, year's uh, harvest event. And by the time they sow those ones, by the time it's rainy season, anytime from January, February, but by March, all these yams 
that arrest them in their beds now. They will sprout. And that's the new beginning. God is start growing again. Uh, before you knew it, by June, July, you have new years. Amen. Uh, you eat there for just about three months consecutively to start preparing for another year. Every farmer that does not prepare his farm ready during this time, or early in January till February, that farmer is bound, not, I mean, sure not to eat uh, new yam unless he is going to buy it. He's going to buy from another person. So that is why all of us we need to prepare our lives ready for a new beginning. Now, what usually happens in December uh, during celebrations is that people will gather together and say they are making New Year resolutions. Amen? Yeah. And that used to be very rampant in those days. Like People have realized the reality today. They don't seem to take it the way it was before. Every December in the church, everywhere at home, everywhere, you see people say, ah, my new year resolution is this year I will not steal. If you are a drunkard, you say this year I want to change my habits. I want to become a responsible person. I don't want to become an alcoholic again. Then many those who are stealing will say, I don't want to steal anymore this new year. Uh, those who are uh, night marauders, they will say, I don't want to be going about in the night again. Then this year, I am going to do something new. I am going to lay my hands. The lazy ones that will resolve also will say, this year, I am going to do something. I am going to work. And for students, many of us who are lazy in their studies, we will say, okay, this year, I am determined to uh, turn a new leaf to start you know, taking my studies very seriously. You can now see, there's always a new beginning. But the question we should ask ourselves is, how much of these promises do we keep? Just like the example of the Bible in one year that I, I took this year, I said, the gentleman, the Nicodemus says, I said, you belong to a club. At the beginning of the year, everybody will come with their uh, in the instruments or whatever, sports uh, materials to say they come to the gym and say, oh, this year I will attend gym very well I will, so that I can keep fit. Some of them will say all those things that I said earlier, but at the end of the day, he said by the time it is one week after that day, you will see that the majority of those who found to be coming to the gym to, so that they can keep fit, they would have come back. So the business itself will come back to normal. It is those who were regular before that will still be regular. I said maybe few, but majority of those who resolved that they are going to keep fit, they will still be, they will still go back and to their old habits, old unhealthy habits. So when we talk of a new beginning, it means that. We have realized something, either that we are doing rightly or wrongly, that we want to either improve upon or stop doing. Amen. Just like the examples I gave, he that was still is says, I'm no longer going to steal. He that is lazy in the study says, this year I'm going to work hard in my studies. So, it's not a matter of what you say. It's a matter of how much you keep the promise. If you make all the promises in this world, you know that it will amount to nothing if it's not implemented. Amen. Therefore, I don't know what your own resolution is. You don't know what mine is. But let it be within us but let us be faithful in keeping to what we said we we'll either will do or will not do. Because it is from there that you can have profit. Somebody who was lazy before, who starts, I mean, who, who resolved that it's going to work hard in the new year, let him go ahead, lay his hands 
upon something and get it done. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 from verse 10. Deuteronomy 28 verse 10. Let's see the various promises that God made for us, which honestly speaking signifies a new beginning. Genesis 28 from verse 10 to 14. Amen. The channel my yes. Yes. The promises of God to for us, yes. Seven to fourteen. Amen. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your in your storehouses and in all and and in all to which you set your, uh, your hand, yes. and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as the holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way, verse 10, then all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, okay. and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall bless many nations, but you shall not borrow, and the Lord will make you the earth and not the earth. You shall be you shall be above us and not be beneath. Amen. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. For since so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right and to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 28 began with If thou shalt obey all the commandments that the Lord God Almighty is giving to us, then it listed from that bell verse 1 to 14 all the blessings that the Lord promised to us. I want to tell you those principles still are still valid today. Amen. Amen. Even though it's an old testament, that's why we said there are apart from the laws themselves, there are some there are every every passage in the Bible has its own uh, lessons that or has its own principles that the Lord brought about from them. Everything that the Lord said to us in Deuteronomy 28 bordered upon obedience to the commandments. Some of the commandments is this. If you will obey the Lord God Almighty, all the enemies that you are afraid of, those of us who go to church and we begin to pray, let my enemies die, let my enemies die, let my enemies die. I think it is better now that you resolve to obey the Lord first. What does the Lord say you should do concerning your enemy? He says, pray for them, not against them. If you don't obey that one, and you are expecting the Lord to kill your enemies, so that you will be alone in this planet Earth, you will be making mistakes. A great, a great one for that matter. You see, God says, pray for your enemies. Give them food. Take good care of them. If they have no clothes, give them clothing materials. If they are hungry, give them food. Pray for their progress. Not that the Lord should kill them. These are some of the reasons why our prayers are not answered. When we pray amiss, we are praying against God's will. The period of the teeth for tart 
an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, is gone. Those are some of the things that the Bible has erased. The Lord has erased. According to Hebrew 7, from 14 to 22. These days, you don't pray against your enemies. Instead, you pray for them. And God says, if you obey this prayer pattern, God himself knows how to tackle your enemies. He said, they shall be afraid of you. They shall flee from you. If they now come to you after you have done what I asked you to do to pray for them, and they now still are determined to hurt you, God says they will come against you in one way. God says I will come against them in seven ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, a lazy person who sits down, and these people are very common in the church of God. A lot of people in the church of God are terribly lazy. They want manna to come from above. They don't want to lift their fingers upon any work so that they can earn their living. Instead, some of you who have busied yourself going to vigils, going to mountains, going to prayer programs so that you will always see people that will help you those who are already doing their work, that after they have done their work, they will come and be using it to feed you that is a lazy bull. You will be disappointed this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Because in this Deuteronomy 28 that we read, God says, I will bless all the work of your hands. I will bless all the work, not even one work, all. Any work you lay your hands upon, it is there I will bless your prayers. If you want to use prayer to go out the, you know, tuning the mind of people so that they will be giving to you what they have labored for without you endeavoring to help people yourself, you will be disappointed. Because even from your prayer session, hunger will wire you out there. Instead of you praying, God says I will bless you so that you become a blessing unto others. But if your own is God, bless me, bless me, bless me. And you are not ready to even bless anybody. And if you say God bless me, you are saying that bless the work of my hands. Not that you sit somewhere. Somebody is working and you are praying, this man that is working this way, let him remember me this year. Let him give me money. Let him, you know, just you begin to use all sorts of methods. And then you, you, you finish there, and then you got home, you are sleeping, expecting that the manner will come from someone who has labored hard. God himself will not allow that person to waste his resources upon you. Amen. But if you are the one that is working on your own, you pray for God's blessing, he blesses the work of your hand. Go and cause somebody else to come and even put more blessings in your hands. For you must provoke a blessing by working so that you will not suffer. Amen. No amount of your prayers will transform your lives for good unless you bend down to work. Because God has said, if you obey, if you obey to work, he said, let him who is stealing stop stealing. Let him go and labor with his hands so that he can feed himself, himself and then be able to bless other people. Amen. Now, students that are looking for expo in their own exams. That's a lazy way. You see, a lot of people are holding certificates that they cannot defend. I remember the first job, office job that I got in my life. I hadn't got the certificate, the professional certificate. I hadn't got it, the that same thing that I started with. I haven't got the exact certificate. But when I went for the test, the man saw the way I performed. And he said, uh -uh. And you say you haven't had your certificate. I said, yes, I, I was going to write the exam about three months before that time. I said, uh, sorry, after that time. Then he said, uh -uh. how come? You are so okay with this work. And that was how God 
gave me special favor. And I was employed, even though I haven't got the certificate. You see, it will show in you. If you are, if you understand something, or you are still struggling to understand something, it will show in you when you present yourself for tests or interviews. You can see that why are, why are people, people still, why are employers still testing people, even though they produce certificates? Because certificate is not the thing, it is you you want to reach. It is your output. Certificate is supposed to confirm that you have gained this ability. But if you have not gotten it, and you are carrying certificate which you went to purchase, you will find that you will not be able to defend the certificate. Very important that we lay hands, our hands upon something. So as students, if you have been toying with your studies, I've said it, nothing is easy. Nothing good is even gotten easy. Education is one of the toughest things to do in this world. But if you will only endeavor to do it, if you will persevere, if you will be hardworking, you surely are going to excel in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't toy with whatever you are doing. Then many of us, the artisans that we are doing so many things, maybe electrician, maybe bricklayers, maybe. Many of you have lost all your customers because of your unholy practices. Many of you, people will give you jobs. The first thing you think of is how to cheat him to the maximum. And maybe he notices it, he sends you away. Whereas if you have done the job diligently well, he will recommend you to many, many others. And many of you, because of your greed for gain, the job you are supposed to do for 2,000 naira, you will say it's 10,000 because you have set demand by your own barometer now. You, you checked on him. You have sized him up. This man is using Camry. This one is using uh, which one? Lexus. This one is using Ferrari. <laughs> so, the bill is not steady. It's according to your status. And now, because of that, you are exploiting them. Apart from you losing the job, or you do the job sharply, you find that you cause the man to waste so much money. Whereas, what God says he hates is a false scale, a false measure. You don't know. And I think the people that are most deprived, most cheated, are the farmers who labor so hard throughout the year. And by the time the products are out, nobody looks at it and says, hey, this one is not worth anything. They take those things away. And you want to prosper. Don't you remember what God says? He says, whatever you do to others, that will return to you. So if you are doing evil, thinking you will recall, you will get... There are so many examples. That's why many things happen to some people because of the evils that they have done. The laws of cause and effect. What you sow is what you reap. You cause somebody sorrow, your sorrow is away from you. You cause somebody to be joyful, the joy of the Lord is coming towards you. Amen. So we need to be very, very careful. Like I said earlier, a new year resolution may just be mere wishes until you have sat down to practice what you promised to do. I don't know what your life is, but I know my own life. I know where my strengths are. I know where my weaknesses are. It is for me to work you know, steadily to overcome my shortcomings. It is for you to work steadily towards overcoming your shortcomings so that your life will be better. Don't sit down somewhere and think that miracles will especially in the Church of God, those of us who are Christians. Focus on Christ. Developing personal relationship with Jesus Christ rather than 
miracles. Can't remember the name of this uh, evangelist that said, I would rather that one soul is saved than to have 10,000 people healed. Amen. I would rather that only one soul is genuinely saved rather than 10,000 people receiving miracles and yet still in their own belief. Amen. Miracles are meat for the children of God. Miracles are constant. Miracles are benefits. If you go to church and maybe you are sick and the pastor, the minister lays hands upon you and you are not healed, what will be your response? Some of us will say, oh, it is not happening in that place. No, it is not happening. Some of you will move from there to another place. Because you are looking for physical miracles. Whereas the greatest miracle that can happen in your life is the miracle of being saved. A person can be crippled, yet he makes heaven. That person is better than the person that can walk with his legs and then head into hellfire. That would not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So the focus that we should have as Christians is to know God. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen. That I may know him the more. And the power of his resurrection. If you go to a church, a miracle of healing has not come. Wait. God does the first miracles. And it is you people that are expecting miracles by all means that are causing many of the ministers, even though they are they themselves are sick. It, it is encouraging them to go and stage manage miracles. And then when you see it, you say you go there. Meanwhile, you have been exploited. So stop pursuing physical miracles. Many of us, the miracles we are waiting for is how we go to outside the country, which God can do at any time, even without you praying. Without you praying, if you trust in the Lord and you do all, you put the process in place, and you are faithful in God to God. God, that one is just a walk over. But many of you, if you do that one for some time, I say, it's not happening. You leave the church. Because your motive is worldly. Your motive is, is not godly. You don't believe in Christ. You are, believing, you are trusting in Christ because of what you will eat or what you will physically gain. And the greatest gain that you can make in Christianity is to make heaven. Amen is to make heaven. Go and read the book of Revelation. I know it's a book that's difficult to read, but it's one book that the Bible says if you read it, you are blessed. Amen. So endeavor to read it. You will see the various stages that Christians will pass through before the issue of the second coming of Christ will come. Let it be your New Year resolution. Strong one for that matter. That this year I am going to follow Christ. That I have decided to follow Christ. No turning back. No going back. But when you see little challenges, what will be your reaction? Won't you run back and deny the Lord? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So a new year resolution is for you to review your life. Check where you are coming from. Thank God for all the achievements. Set new standards that you want to attain. If you are not setting standards, how do you measure the progress you are making? I remember when I was young, and I left my town then to Lagos. Every December when I come home, I try to look at my mates, those that we left school together, and you know, I will kind of be looking at the progress that they have made. 
time by time, I discovered that in every three years, the significant progress that I made, also with other people. And what is bringing about that? Whenever I, I went back to Lagos, what I did was follow my studies schedule very well, and then do my normal work in the office, and then ensure that the monies I earned were not wasted on luxury. And that has been the pattern. And to God be the glory, by the time I will see my mate that we left school together, I saw that I wasn't doing badly. But those of them too that said or that left the school and did nothing, they remain where they are. Never remain static. Amen. Yes. Never, never remain static. Desire progress spiritually. Don't be at the same level that you are spiritually this year, next year. If you still remain at the level you were last year, this year, it means you have not added value to your life. To me, now I know that I am going to study God help me. I'm going to study the Bible the more. That is why we're in our Bible studies, that's why we are picking it, you know, from the very beginning. Because if you don't study the Bible yourself, you'll be deceived. We want to know the truth. And we want to follow the truth. And the truth shall set us free. Then ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Praise the Lord. A new beginning. We have another opportunity of another 12 months. Today is the second day of the year. The January. The beginning of the beginning. Yet today was first. Every month has a beginning. We have one to either 31st or 28th or 29th. Amen. Then you have 12 years. Sorry, 12 months in a year. Every month presents its own opportunity for you to make progress in life. Those of you who will be resuming school on maybe the next week or something. If you spend one week at home doing nothing, you've lost something. Start in earnest. Start in earnest. And make sure that on your own, you do a lot of private studies. Make sure that you desire to improve more. If you do that, you will see what the Lord will do for you. Amen. As the Lord God Almighty lives, as many as will resolve, to do well this year. I will bend down to follow the path that will lead them to the path of wellness. It shall be well with them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Like I said earlier, it's not how much of the statements you make, but how much of the work that you do. Because God is not ready to bless your empty mere wishes. He's ready to bless what you give and then prosper you through them. And God will help you in Jesus' name. I did mention earlier, spiritually this year you have to resolve to know Christ the more. Knowing Christ the more, according to Matthew 22, from verse 37 to 39, is that you should love your God with the whole Matthew 22, from 37 to 39. You should love your God with the whole of your heart. I don't know the level of love you have for God today. When they say, let us go and pray. Let us go and study the Bible. It is then that you are snoring. It is then that headache worries you. It is then that they call upon you and you say, then you lose interest. How long will you continue to be, you know, cold or look warm? You've got to be really warm this year. Then they say, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Those of you who are quarreling with your neighbor, you think that the next door neighbor is your enemy. You don't even know your enemy, you are the greatest enemy of yourself. You better stop being an enemy to yourself from now on. Pray to God, study the word of God by right, the book of Joshua 1, 8 to 10. Says we should study the word of God day and night. They say, let us read the Bible. Let us study the word of God. Let us know the mind of God. 
You are not interested. But you want God to pour out his blessings upon you. Did you not do it in the Deuteronomy 20 that we read? That God is willing to bless the work of your hands? The work of your hand includes Bible study. So that you know the heart of God. It includes the fact that you should be prayerful. It includes that you must labor with your hands. Not that you should go and be. Yes, spiritual exercise is good. You could fast. It's good for you. Profitable, both spiritually and practical. But if they are gluten, you are doomed. Because your sister will complain. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then concerning the physical things, this year you should resolve to do what God says you should do. James 1 27. James 1 27. You as Christians, you are supposed to help the needy, you are supposed to, you know, help the widows, you are supposed to help your parents, take good care of them. You are supposed to provide for people's needs. Amen. Not that you just go and sit in one place and say, let somebody bless me, let somebody bless me. When that person is working. Somebody, God can use anybody to bless you is good. But don't be lazy yourself. Let whatever somebody is giving you be additional to what God is even giving you directly through the work of your own hands. Amen. Because the Lord is ready to prosper and bless everybody. You bless others. Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 12 to 4 that I mean verse 4 in particular that Genesis chapter 12 verse 4 in particular that through you the family, the entire families of the world will be blessed. Praise the Lord. God says I will bless Abraham and that Abraham will become a blessing. Amen. What are you doing that the Lord is going to use to bless others through you? Is it your kindness? Is it your generosity? Is it your profession? Those of you who have careers, do something and bless other people. Bless them with the word of your mouth. Bless them with your finances. Bless them with material things. Bless them with spiritual blessings. That is why it should be part and parcel of our goals to follow what Matthew 28 from verse 16 tells us. Matthew 28 from verse 16. Say, go ye into the world and preach, teach, and baptize the people. Many of us just think that, you know, becoming a Christian is a place to lazy around. You'll be there and say you are in the spirit when you are supposed to be working. Praying to God is without ceasing. Anywhere you are, anytime, any time of the day, is praying without ceasing. You can be working and your heart is praying. And God will answer those prayers. I remember when I was in the factory in those days. Honestly speaking, things were hard. And uh, one day I was late to work with just about five, ten minutes or so. And the gate was locked. And eventually I received mercy from the gate man. He opened the gate. I entered. But from my clocking card, the, the card, the time card that we had, you have to slot it into the clocking machine. It will record exactly what you are doing. For those five, ten minutes lateness, I was given seven days suspension because I was five or ten minutes late. Then I realized, <laughs> career-wise, I had not arrived. Praise the Lord. Everything that was, then I started a new beginning. I resolved that then if this work is like this, then I'm not there yet. That I started praying to God, please, Lord. Give me another good job where I can make a good career. And not only that, the second uh, resolution that I made was, Lord, from now onward. You see, the mistake I made was that 
Immediately I got that job, I thought I had secured a good job that will last me forever. Then I wanted to abandon my education. Hey, Amen. I was not going to lesson anymore after that time. I wanted to be enjoying my little money, which God did not want within my portion. And I resolved that I will go back to my study room. Then, every book I see, I will read. Every lesson, I will go to. Everybody that knows more than me, I go and meet him or her. Amen. That they gave me that total resolution that I must become a graduate. That day I resolved. And even as we are now doing the work from that day onwards, I will be praying aloud. I will be singing it aloud. I will be talking to people. I will be telling them, hey, this work we are doing has no future. Let's make sure that we are doing something to improve ourselves. And I got used to it. And by the special grace of God, I became a graduate. Not only a graduate, but a professional person that succeeded. And it paid me off later. Amen. Those of you, no matter what situation you think you are, don't be contented with that. Contentment is good, though. Amen? Amen. But be contented with what you have now. And be working towards getting something greater. Amen. That's why I say don't be contented. Don't be contented with say, yes, you have had your school set, and therefore you are going to stop there. No. Thank God for your school set. Endeavor to be a university graduate. And after that one, endeavor to be a master's degree holder. And then after that, if you now desire to become a professor, whatever, just accept. Because it gives you better exposure. Exposes you to better opportunities. But if you stop where you are, the world will go past you. And it will be nobody's fault but yours. A new year resolution. I don't know what yours is. I want you to think deeply this day. And determine to do better than you have ever been doing. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Please, again, and I repeat it. Lay your hands on something spiritually. Lay your hands upon the Bible. Pray to God fervently. Be consistent with building your relationship with God. Trust in God the more. Then in your secular activity. Let there be something that you are known to be doing that will fetch you your daily bread and give you your desired promotion. And as you do this, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I hope you make it the right. Our Daddy and our God, we just want to thank you. Daddy will bless you. We honor your holy name. Thank you for this great opportunity to hear from you this morning. We appreciate you because. We have gone past the era of deceiving ourselves. That's why we come to you this morning. As we will determine to do better in life. Spiritually and physically. Please help us to attain this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You have let us know that you are not willing to bless laziness. So we should work. In our spiritual life we should work. In our studies we should work. In our career, we should work. Even our family and neighbors, we should work. Work hard to make sure that our relationships are safe. We should work hard to make sure that we show our children the way of the Lord, our parents, so that when they grow up, they will not depart from us. And Heavenly Father, we pray. As we obey this commandment, please let it be well with us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The freedom. I know the truth. The truth has set you free. The truth that we know today, please let it set us free Amen. from all forms of backwardness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed be to your name. By the time it is December, we look back, oh Lord, let us have a party of blessings. As we bend down to work, 
this year, spiritually and physically, Heavenly Father, please reward us with good success. We know it will be tough and rough. Help our infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of the day, Father, let all glory and adoration come back to you. Amen. Why the devil is put to shame Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Blessed be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.